What's going on, FG fam? Welcome to another episode of the Miami Marlins franchise here on MLB The Show 21 Next Generation. This has been a great series so far, and I hope you guys will continue to enjoy it. If you are, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content, because that is what we provide as we go into Oracle Park to start this episode. The San Francisco Giants and Alex Wood taking the mound in this game. He and Buster Posey scheming against this Miami Marlin lineup here. Starling Marte to start it all off in the top of the first with a big gapper into right center field all the way up to the 415 wall. And Marte will walk on into third base with a triple. Now Jesus Aguilar and this one right back to Wood. Wood on to first to get out of the inning unscathed. And we'll see how that ends up helping him out as Sandy Alcantara coming to the mound. He's had four starts this year, but only a 5.68 ERA. It has not been the type of start to his season that we would want to see or that he would want to see for himself. Look at this one away from the shift. And that is going to be an easy double, maybe even triple. No, they'll hold him up at second. It is a double in the bottom of the first inning. Two away. Here's this one on to short and an easy play over to first to get out of the first inning. Again, unscathed for Alcantara. So both pitchers face a little bit of trouble and get out of it. Here's Tyler Flowers, and he is going to rip this one into the left center field wall up right up near the 382 sign. And that is going to clear the bag and get an RBI. So here's Alcantara up at the plate trying to help himself out. There's a single into center. They're going to bring Flowers home, and he is going to get in there. Two-zip Marlins. Here's Flowers again later on in the fourth, and he rips one again out to left field. This one is a no-doubter to left. Gone like a girl in a country song. As my boy Nitro Drive would say, 444 feet. That thing was absolutely crushed by Flowers. It is gone, and the Marlins will extend their lead to 4-0 in this one. Alcantara, this one over to Brandon Crawford, and it will drop. Falling to the ground out in left field is Dickerson. That's not looking good, and look at this. Bringing them all home. Going to try to get the inside the park home run. A little bit greedy there was Crawford, and he is tagged out at the plate. So at the end of four, 4-2 four Marlins. Coming back in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's this one dribbled onto short. Tough play to make. Won't even make the throw. And... That could start some trouble. A base hit was the decision on that. And this will indeed start trouble as this one is hit all the way out to that 415 corner. And it is going to bring home an RBI triple for the Giants. They will go ahead and make it 4-3. James Hoyt coming in, hoping he can stop the bleeding here and keep the Marlins with the lead. James Hoyt's pitched in 10 games so far this season. He hasn't had the best or worst year, but his year's getting a little worse here. A two-run blast, and that is going to give the Giants the lead. The lead. Mike Yastrzemski, Mike Yazowski, whatever you want to call him, but there it is, the home run for the Giants, making it 5-4. to four. So the Giants and the hometown crowd excited about taking the lead here late in the sixth. Here's this liner that will get the Marlins out of the sixth. We go to the top of the eighth, and this one is taken down the left field line. Brian Anderson, and it will be a single. He does not attempt to take extra bases. Here's Reyes Moranta coming in to pitch in relief for the Giants. And he will face Orlando Arcia. And Arcia takes it to center. That one will fall. This will bring home an RBI here in the top of the eighth and tie the game at five. Brilliant and much needed hit from Orlando Arcia. That is going to bring on David Peralta. And Peralta will take a walk here in the top of the eighth. Big walk. To put two on with two away, and this one is going to be easily caught 
behind the plate by Buster Posey. So, in the middle of the eighth, it is what it is, but not before Orlando Arcia could tie the game with the RBI single in center. And that'll bring in Shane Green. He's pitched five games this season to a nine ERA. It has not gone well for Shane Green. Here is a changeup inside. Gets Mike Yastrzemski on the strikeout. Still in the bottom of the eighth. This is going to be caught out there in left. Presumably it will be, and that will end the eighth inning. We're still tied at five. Here comes Monty Harrison, and Harrison into left with a base hit. Gives the Marlins the 6-5 lead in the top of the 11th inning. Bringing in Roberto Osuna to try to close this thing out. He's pitched four games. He doesn't have a great ERA. He hasn't been very good against lefties. Good thing he's not facing one here. But this one could get down if they don't get there quick enough. There we go. Easy play made. Runner on second stays there. That brings up Yastrzemski. He'll take a walk on the slurve outside. And put two on for Alex Dickerson. Dickerson takes a fastball up and in for strike three. And that's the second out of the bottom half of the inning. This cutter misses from Osuna and Brandon Belt will walk them loaded. So Osuna against Brandon Crawford. He gets him to swing inside on the cutter and he is gone. The Marlins come away with an extra innings win. They battled for this one. Battle tested they are right now as they really had a fight for this win. Tyler Flowers, player of the game, three for five with a homer. Two doubles, he absolutely had a great game. Shane Green gets the win, he had to pitch three relief innings in this one. As for the lineup, everybody got at least a hit who was in our starting lineup, including Sandy Alcantara, the pitcher. Marte got the triple, Flowers got two doubles and a homer. Alcantara, Flowers, Arcia, and Harrison with all of our RBIs. Alcantara pitched five innings, gave up four runs, not his greatest start, but hopefully he can do better in future starts. Yastrzemski hit the bomb for the Giants. He also had a double, so did Brandon Belt, LaStella and Dickerson with some triples. And let's see how we do against the Milwaukee Brewers. We take two out of three, that's not bad. We'll take two out of three every single series if we can do it. Of course, it's not always gonna happen. We take a tough one run loss to the Nationals and that's the game we're gonna check out here next as we are in Washington, D.C. at Nationals Park. The 11 and 15 Nationals hosting our 10 and 17 Marlins. You've seen they've won the first two games here, 7-6 and 7-4. So hoping to not get swept and we would have to beat Max Scherzer to make that happen. He has pitched six games. He's three and one with a 2-0-1 ERA and a 117 whip. So Scherzer as expected has started with a really good season here. Jeff Samarja, who we picked up off of the free agent wire. Two and two in his five starts with a 382 and a 124 whip. Not bad actually for somebody we basically picked up off the dumpster pile. Trey Turner leading off in the ball game in the bottom of the first for Washington and he is going to hit a gapper into right center field. Cut off before it could get to the wall, but it doesn't matter, he's fast as Hail. He is going to make it into second base. Here's Luis Garcia coming up, second batter in this one. And this one's heading towards the gap as well. It will get down and all the way to the wall. Trey Turner will score easily and a triple. An RBI triple will give Washington the 1-0 lead. Here's a hit up the middle and this one bouncing through as well. So right away, the Nats starting off with a 2-0 lead. Rough, rough start for Jeff Samarja. Now a runner on second with two away. Dribbler over to short. This is taken care of and thrown on to first. And finally, the first inning is over for Jeff Samarja. We go into the top of the seventh. Absolutely nothing happened in this game until then. And look at this, right off of Scherzer's leg for a base hit. Could that maybe start a little trouble? Two on now for Starling Marte. Marte puts one into right field going to attempt to score the runner all the way from second he does score cuts the lead in half two to one Scherzer still on the mound 
but that would be the end for him. Ryan Harper coming into this one. He's pitched 15 games. He's 0-5 with a 7.41 ERA and a 300 average against both sides of the plate. So if we're going to do anything against anyone, it would be now. But Jesus Aguilar strikes out on the away off-speed pitch. Here's Brian Anderson and another off-speed pitch gets him to end the seventh, a 2-1 game at the end of seven. Ryan Harper actually has a good inning and you can tell he's pumped about it. We go to the top of the eighth. Here is Wander Suero pitching and this is a big hit to the right field corner by John Birdie, which could score two runs here and it does. Marlins take the lead on a two RBI double from John Birdie. That brings in Jeremy Jeffries. He's pitched in eight games. He's got a 415 ERA, 235 average against righties. And he's facing one right here in Starling Marte, who gets another hit through the hole. Coming around to score is Birdie. He will. It is four to two. In the top of this eighth inning, the Marlins have made their way back in this game after a bad first inning. They have turned it around. Here comes James Hoyt into the game. We've seen him a little bit earlier this episode. 3.94 ERA for Hoyt. He gets the strikeout call on the low slider. Doesn't like it, but that's too bad. Here's Kyle Schwarber. He's going down the left field line, and what a snag. Little web gem to bring us to the top of the ninth. It's Miguel Rojas. He gets jammed, but it's going to end up falling for a base hit. Runner goes all the way to third from first. And we've got corners here in the top of the ninth inning. Tyler Flowers is going to come in to pinch hit. Batting 227 this year with the one home run that we actually saw earlier in this episode. And he will take a walk. Bases are walk loaded by Jeremy Jeffries. Is he in trouble with only one out in the top of the ninth? Well, we'll see because they're going to pull him. Daniel Hudson's coming into this game. Nine games, 386 ERA. He's been very good against right-handed batters. And here's John Birdie, the right-handed batter, but it does not pay off this time as Birdie gets that to fall in center field. He will bring home two. And two on with one away in the top of the ninth and a 6-2 to two lead, a two-run double for John Birdie. Here's Starling Marte. He's made some great hits so far in this game, but this time he will strike out, and that'll get them finally their last ups. Roberto Osuna coming into the game. Not that it's a save opportunity, but he was already planned to come in. Here is a dribbler, and this will be a double play to get the Marlins out of it, and they will win. 6-2, to two. Mattingly very happy about this as the Miami Marlins wearing uh, slight throwbacks. I mean, you know, those 2000s, the very first Miami Marlins jerseys, they are wearing them. John Birdie, two doubles, four RBIs in this game. He had four of the six RBIs. Yimi Garcia gets the win for us. Wander Suero gets the loss for them. John Birdie, absolutely instrumental in this win. The other two RBIs coming from Starling Marte. But Birdie's two doubles were the only extra base hits of the game. So Marja goes five innings, allows two runs, but he gets a no decision. Yini Garcia shut the door the rest of the way. Some good bullpen play for once. Good to see when we can get somebody who can be reliable out of the bullpen the way Yimi Garcia was today. We will have a chance even against a pitcher like Max Scherzer, who lowered his ERA to 194. Now, I have to apologize for one thing. Usually, I'm very good at keeping up with when the minor leagues begin, but I did not realize that they had AAA starting a month earlier than AA. So an entire month of AAA has gone by for our Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, and we are going to player lock Gerard Encarnacion. And here he is in the top of the first inning against the Gwinnett Stripers. And Encarnacion stripes one to right, but it is caught. Unfortunately for the Stripers, though, he will get a sacrifice fly, quote unquote. That was not a fly ball, but it will count as the runner tags and comes in. So Encarnacion with a ribby at the very least. In the bottom half of the third inning here, playing a little bit of defense out in right field. 
had a range over and make this catch to end the third inning. We go to the top of the fourth, six to two, and Carnacion hits the glove of the pitcher, and he gets thrown out. A little unlucky there. Pitcher really didn't know where it was, and then he ended up picking him up and throwing him out. This one goes down the right field line, though, in the top of the sixth in a six to four game. Runner in front goes all the way to third, and they get runners on the corners. They don't end up scoring there, though, our Jumbo Shrimp. Here's Encarnacion. He's got to make a nice run down to the wall on this one and a very nice range and grab for Mr. Encarnacion. Now he's up with the bases bomb that he stripes one, a perfect, perfect, all the way to the wall. He is going to clear the bags as Encarnacion with a double. Oh, he doesn't clear the bag. Somebody was a little slow there in coming home from third. I would have went if I was there, and I'm not very fast. But Stripers take the L. Our Jumbo Shrimp get a 10-4 win. Four runs in the ninth inning, four runs in the third inning. Matt Weeters gets player of the game. Two for four with an RBI and a homer. Encarnacion, though, goes three for five with a double and three ribbies, who we highlighted in this game. Chris Chinia, Chinea, I guess you would call him. He went three for five with two RBIs, a walk, and a strikeout. So Chinea with two doubles, Encarnacion with one, Weeders with the homer, and a ton of RBIs out there. Pitching wise, Cabrera, he was all right. A couple earned runs through four and two thirds. Looking at the Gwinnett Stripers. And it doesn't look like they had a ton going on. They did have Lug Bauer get his second homer of the year. He had two RBIs. Adrianza had two RBIs as well. Pfeiffer, four innings, six earned, given up. So let's take a look at the double A opener in Penza with the Pensacola Blue Wahoos. I love the names in our minor league system. We are playing the boring ass Mississippi Braves. You know, they just copy the MLB team. No big deal. Trey Riley, 6'3", 205, 21-year-old right-handed pitcher for the Mississippi Braves. will be taking the mound for them. We are going to highlight Max Meyer, though. Here he is taking the mound and getting the strikeout to end the first inning. Now a runner on first base, and this is hit into left field. This could be some trouble for our guy, Max Meyer. First round pick of the Miami Marlins in the 2020 draft. Got to see how he comes along. This is a base hit up the middle as well. That is going to score the first run of the game, and Mississippi takes a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the second. That's not ideal for Max. Here's the bases loaded with two away, and Max gets a deep fly out to center to get out of it. And now we go to the bottom of the third. Two outs in the bottom of the third, and here's another opportunity to get out of the inning. Nice play made by the catcher behind the plate. Here in the bottom of the fourth, gets a strikeout with the bases loaded, though. And then another strikeout on a high inside fastball. So two straight strikeouts. Here's Drew Waters, and he is going to fly this one into center, and it will land. Two runs come home for Mississippi. They take the 3-1 lead. And still the bottom of the fourth with two away. So that is going to be the end for Max Meyer. Not his greatest outing. Not really what I was looking and hoping to see from him. Will Stort will come into the game. Six foot two, 175, and we will manage our way out of this because it was meant to be a highlight of Max Meyer, and he wasn't able to get deep into this game. So the Mississippi Braves up 3-1. to one. Can we make some sort of a comeback here? Looking at the managerial aspect. There's a solo homer for Guerrero. That works to make it 3-2. But it doesn't look like we're getting a lot elsewhere. So we're going to take Will Stewart out. We're going to put in Mike Morin. And Mike Morin having a little trouble getting through the ninth but he does get through it eventually so now our last hopes here in the ninth look at this a score another scored three run score six run score seven run score 
in the ninth inning. That is entirely unexpected. Eight run score and a 10-3 win for our Blue Wahoos. How on earth did we do this? I have no idea. Things just went wild. J.J. Blade gets player of the game with a triple and three ribbies. Mike Morin actually picks up the dub. Josh Graham picks up the loss. He gave up eight runs in zero innings. He did not get a single out in that ninth inning. That's embarrassing is what that is. So Guerrero hit a homer for us. Morin, Navarretto, Blade, Levine, Conine, Guerrero, and Brigman all with RBIs. Meyer did not have a great outing, but man, bullpen really held it down, and the, the lineup came alive out of seemingly nowhere. Riley went six innings, only gave up a run out here looking like Jacob deGrom picking up an L. Well, not really an L, but, you know, a no decision where he should probably get a win. So we sweep the Arizona Diamondbacks, and then we lose two out of three to the Milwaukee Brewers coming back around. So now we play the Diamondbacks again. We're actually not going to take a look at the Diamondbacks at all in this month. So we take three out of four against the Diamondbacks. Hey, in seven games, we were 6-1 and one against Arizona. Not bad. Dodgers, I thought about playing them, but we took two out of three where we probably shouldn't have. We got swept by the Phillies, so we're probably going to play them coming back around. We lost two out of three against the Mets. We won the first game against the Phillies. I think this is probably where we're going to go. We're going to go to the Aaron Nola game. We have won the first two games of this set, and the 27-23 and 23 Philadelphia Phillies come to South Beach Park to face Pablo Lopez, who has pitched 10 games, and he is 0-5 with not even the worst record. I mean, with not even the worst ERA, a 3.65, not even that horrible. Here's a big hit out to right field though. Long ball all the way up to the fence. That is going to score the first run of the game in an RBI triple fashion. And the Phillies take the 1-0 lead here. That then brings up Reese Hoskins and Hoskins dribbler into center. The hard hit ball will score the second run of the game, and he remains on first base with one away. Adam Duvall comes up for our Marlins with the bases bombed and nobody away. And we're going to try to tag John Birdie home, and Birdie's going to make it to cut this lead in half. Runners on the corners with just one away in the bottom of the first now for Miami and it's Corey Dickerson and Dickerson up the middle it will get through and Dickerson with an RBI single still two runners on with one away now it's bases loaded Orlando Arcia can't get it through but they won't get double play on this they get Arcia at first but we take a 3-2 lead. Here is a big rip out to left field. Will this get over the wall? It will. It is gone. And the first home run in an actual highlighted game at South Beach Park is hit by Didi Gregorius. That is gone. A bomb out to left field. It takes a pretty hefty poke to get it out of this park in any part of the field. That thing is gone. Scott Kingery comes up, and he's going to hit a base hit into right field. Misplayed out there in right, and it's an easy RBI double for him. So now Roman Quinn comes up in the top of the fourth inning. This one down the left field line. They're going to score another run here on an RBI double. And the Phillies took a 5-3 lead. Now in the top of the fifth with two on and two away. Long reach to get out to this one. He doesn't make the play. He loses it in the sun. And it is going to be an 8-3 ball game on an inside the park home run. How embarrassing is that? Here's Didi Gregorius again. And this is another ripped ball all the way out to right field. That's coming off the wall as well. Gregorius getting over to third with an opportunity to potentially do some more damage here in the top of the seventh. This one is a dribbler 
over to first, but look how fast 99 speed man is not going to get thrown out. And they will get the 10th run for them of the ball game. It's 10-3 here in the top of the eighth. This is hit really far by Andrew McCutcheon. And Andrew McCutcheon takes this over the left field wall, 467 feet. So 11-4 after that solo shot. Bottom of the ninth. Marlins think they got no shot. Well, here they come, roaring on back with a triple all the way down the right field line. That brings home a few. So it'll be 11-6 here in the bottom of the ninth. Still five runs away. This one's barely touched over to second base. They'll take the easy out, but it's an RBI easy out. Make it 11 to seven. Runner on first base doesn't make the throw. It's an error. Manager not happy. Here's Tony Watson coming into the game. He's got a 6.05 ERA. Will he be able to help the Phillies end this? Here's a dribbler and that's gonna get through. Through the hole, another run coming home. It's 11-8, Marlins are on their way back here. A 3-1 count, this one's hit up the middle. Nicely played, double play ball, and that will finally end this game as the Marlins are able to run off a very nice bottom of the ninth, but not good enough to take the victory or even tie it up and get it to extras. Didi Gregorius, player of the game. He was four for five with a homer and a triple. Just missing the double for the cycle. Aaron Nola hit a double. Gregorius did, Quinn did, and Kingery. Home runs by McCutcheon, Gregorius, and Kingery. So the first three home runs in, highlight, in a highlighted game in this park are all by the Philadelphia Phillies. And so as we continue to look through this box score, the Marlins with RBIs from Dickerson, two from Marte, two from Duvall, two from Cooper, and one from Arcia. Marte and Cooper hit triples in this game. Lopez, five runs in five innings. Not, of course, his greatest outing. His ERA inflates to a 409. So we continue simulating a little bit here, get the win against the Phillies in the fourth game. So we take three out of four. Not too bad at all. We are heading into June. The draft is in five days. What does that mean for you? You guys are gonna you guys are gonna have an opportunity to possibly get yourself some prospects in this league. So that is going to be fun to see. Uh, we are going to go ahead. We're taking a look at the stats here. You can see those on your screen, at least to this point in the season, what guys have been doing. Our best pitcher right now, I don't know, Yimi Garcia. I mean, <laughs> as far as bullpen is concerned, our best starter probably has been Jeff Samarja, which is kind of weird to say, honestly. But we're taking a look there. Taking a look at the standings, we are seven games out of first in the NL East. I don't really expect us to compete for a division title this year. Maybe a wild card spot, but that one is also very much in question. Padres are winning the West by six and a half over the Dodgers. Kind of figured that this game was going to love the Padres. We are three and a half games out of a wild card positioning. The Phillies are in the spot that we would be looking for, and we just got absolutely hammered by them, but we did win three out of four against them. Take a look at who's winning these AL spots and the Red Sox and the White Sox. Both Soxes are in the wild card spots. Jumbo Shrimp are leading the AAA East Southeast, the AA South South. Blue Wahoos are five games out there. They are under 500. They're not looking too, too good. So, if you guys want a spot in the upcoming draft class, make sure you follow the template that I have set for you in the comments section below. I also put it in the description, so there's two spots for you to take a look at it. Make sure you follow it exactly, or you will not be getting yourself a player in the class. That's just how it is. I will pick a select few amount of players every season. So we'll see how you guys do with that. Make sure you drop a like as well. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you're excited for the rest of this series, I really appreciate it. And if you want to see some more franchise, make sure you click right here to see some more franchise. I feel you some help.